Welcome to everybody. I'm, uh, my name is uh, Luca and I, am, uh, I do have the pleasure to, to introduce Welcome. you to introduce you to uh, our plan. So, as, uh, as you all know, uh, the session will be on uh, uh, Navident uh, version 2.2, the version that will be released uh, by Claronav. And uh, this version contains so many features and so many outstanding uh, capabilities that uh, I'm really keen and excited uh, to be able to share with you guys uh, uh, today. So uh, the, the event is going to be registered. So there will be people uh, who uh, will make, won't make it uh, uh, for the live session that uh, will enjoy the registration of, uh, of this event. For the lucky of you who made it, uh, you do have uh, the opportunity to write your questions on the chat. So uh, the idea, and that's the, the rule of the, of the house, is that I will make the presentation and I un and mute all of you. So you won't be able uh, to communicate with me, if not by writing uh, up on, uh, on the chat. And I will be addressing and answering all questions which I'll be reading uh, on the chat. So my suggestion, uh, if you do have any question, write up uh, on the chat and uh, I will uh, address each individual question soon after the presentation. Uh, this uh, event is not uh, necessarily related to uh, users and uh, we opened up uh, to both users and not users. So I thought would have been a good idea to spend uh, just uh, a couple of words on what we're talking about. We're talking about dynamic navigation, we're talking about Navident, what it's all about. It's basically, it's comparable to GPS technology. Uh, as we are all aware, thanks to satellites, we can uh, look at our smartphone maps and, uh, and basically understand where we are and what is uh, the best way to reach what we want to, to, to reach. Uh, and and that, that idea, it's uh, really intertwined with, uh, with Navident because uh, equally, what uh, uh, Navident and dynamic navigation does, it tracks motion. It's a motion tracking technology. It tracks the movement of the surgeon's hand and the movements of patient head. And all these movements, thanks to the software, are matched to the 3D, the, the CBT, C, CBCT of the patient, the 3D images of the patient. So we, the benefit of that is that you do have a, a real-time feedback of what you do as a surgeon on the patient. That, it's a quite uh, telling uh, and important uh, feature. And now it's basically it's, uh, synthesized by Navident, as, as you can see, is a portable interoperatory interoffice uh, device which uh, allows surgeon uh, to do, uh, you know, uh, and to operate with uh, a real time feedback on what he does on the patient anatomy. So, that, having said that, and uh, that was uh, uh, just uh, a, a small introduction, introductory. Uh, for uh, for the newcomers, for those of you who haven't had uh, the opportunity to work and uh, live and breathe with Navident. Um, but the opportunity we have today is to present you with uh, Navident 2.2. It's uh, the new version, which uh, is going to be uh, released uh, by the end of this month and has uh, uh, so many uh, features and so many benefits. As much that uh, we won't be capable to address all of them today. So what we uh, thought 
we thought to split this presentation in two. Uh, one will, of course, will take place today, and another one, uh, second one, we will take place uh, in in the short future. And uh, the reason why we thought to split it's uh, easily uh, given by the sheer amount of uh, features that uh, we are currently presenting. And uh, I want to first of all list all of the seven features that I will dwell on and, uh, uh, and highlight what are the key takeaways, the key uh, uh, success uh, factors for each individual uh, feature. First of all, we're talking about uh, uh, the opportunity to uh, add and import multiple SDL. So we will uh, dwell on, uh, on this feature. We will see that uh, thanks, uh, to, thanks to it, we do have a chance uh, to register to the same CBCT dataset, uh, multiple STL files. And I will provide you with an example how to achieve that by importing uh, the upper scan, the lower scan, and the byte scan and registering all together. And of course, what is uh, the benefit of, of doing that? It's to facilitate prosthetic planning. So that feature has been uh, conceived and, uh, and put in place to really facilitate uh, prosthetic driven uh, uh, planning. Then uh, <clears throat> the other feature which I dwell upon is the STL trace registration. For those who are not familiar with Navident, um, uh, the key, one of the key features of Navident from a technical standpoint is the opportunity to register the anatomy of the patient without having the patient wearing uh, any, any uh, marker at the time of the CBCT, but being capable to register the data set and the anatomy of the, of the patient uh, straight on the software. We're doing, do, we're doing that by the means of uh, uh, a, a protocol which we call trace and place. Then one of the key features that we introducing uh, with the new version 2.2 is the opportunity to obtain registration not only uh, with the DICOM dataset, but also by importing uh, and matching uh, the STL file. So uh, those cases where the scatter is significant and uh, uh, the artifacts hinders uh, the opportunity to uh, uh, you know, trace patient's crown, because of uh, uh, the metallic uh, of the, the uh, of the restoration, in those cases when the artifact uh, it's it's king, then uh, you know tracing uh, the patient tooth and matching uh, uh, the tracing of the patient tooth with the 3D rendering of the, the DICOM dataset, it's really problematic. One opportunity, and this is the opportunity that we are introducing uh, with this feature is that uh, we can import the STL of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Pontic of, uh, the, uh, of the restoration of the patient. And then uh, we can match that into the DICOM uh, data set. So this is a, a, a very interesting uh, element that we will add uh, into our arsenal. Then, I will talk about uh, some improved implant planning uh, functionalities. We will talk about locking uh, a planned uh, virtual implant in order to prevent any accidental change. We will be talking about grouping several implants together to move or apply changing changes simultaneously to those implants. 
and then also copying uh, one virtual implant property into another virtual implant. So we're going to have a chance to really dig a bit further on, uh, uh, on, on, that, on that element as well. What are we going to be talking as well? We will talk as well about the opportunity with the version 2.2 of angulating uh, implants on some weird angles. So for those who are using Navident uh, in endo, for example, and they need to uh, do, you know, some uh, uh, apicoectomies or activities that uh, is linked uh, uh, to uh, angulation, which are higher than in the standard vertical position of implants, they will enjoy this feature very much. And that's something, uh, again, we will uh, dwell upon. Of course, we will introduce also uh, the topic of uh, an improved uh, EvaluNav. EvaluNav, it's uh, the uh, software which is into the Navident ecosystem. And it's a software which enables users to compare a CBCT post-op CBCT with a pre-op CBCT in order to assess how accurate the implant placement uh, was during the surgery. Well, uh, this uh, ecosystem, the EvaluNav uh, uh, software has been uh, improved and uh, has been uh, simplified and therefore is not, is, is very simple now, it's very easy and uh, intuitive, uh, the process of uh, uh, matching uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 old, the old thing together. Then we will uh, uh, talk about another important feature which is introduced, which is uh, adding a, a, a saw cutting plane. We do have a chance uh, when working with uh, the piezo by using a Navident uh, 2.2 to um, introduce a, a cutting plane, to draw a cutting plane and to follow that they follow that cutting plane using a, a piezo handpiece. And we will see where and how that feature is gonna be uh, useful uh, for, for you guys working on, uh, on Navident. Then we will uh, uh, present a, a protocol which is uh, uh, geared to completely identical shows, a protocol which enables to overcome the existing protocol, which is uh, using a, a mini implant placed before surgery. And uh, that protocol uh, we know, and we, uh, we've been uh, uh, talking about it, uh, and we, we already discussed that uh, placing a mini implant before taking a CBCT might have represented uh, uh, some challenges. And in order to overcome those challenges, we will introduce uh, this uh, uh, protocol of uh, screw fiducials registration, which are uh, placed uh, either uh, on the patient in terms of uh, fixing the screws on the patient jaw, or using uh, what we call uh, a navi bite. And again, uh, that uh, takes place, uh, you know, while, uh, uh, you know, uh, before, soon after, uh, so, soon before uh, the, uh, the patient scanning, but with a protocol which really uh, has put off any problem or uh, any difficulty for both the surgeon and the patient. So because of the sheer amount of uh, the new features, as I mentioned before, we will split this presentation in twos and uh, I will uh, dwell first on the first five items and I will leave the sixth and the seventh item for a second go-to-meeting session. So we will have a chance either to you know, get together again live, like uh, we're doing now, or for those who won't be capable uh, 
to do it a second time, of course, we're gonna register the sixth and the seventh item uh, uh, presenting them and, uh, and then uh, uh, of course, allowing everybody to enjoy and understand the benefits of, of these two uh, 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 last items. So we will focus therefore on uh, the first five items of, of changes. So let, let's start then with uh, uh, the first, uh, which is a multiple STL importation. Uh, so that's it's uh, um, uh, that is uh, uh, you know a thing that uh, we are talking uh, in the in the next few minutes and explain how the whole thing will take place. So first of all, this is a, a quite familiar picture uh, for those who are knowing and using a Navident. I will explain briefly for those who are newcomers for Navident. Basically, we do have a control panel on the left. Then we do have a five quadrants. When we, and in those quadrants, we do have a 3D rendering uh, of the CBCT, a Panorex. We do have uh, the actual view, the, the, the sagittal view, and the coronal view. Then on the uh, on the um, on the control panel, we added uh, uh, this uh, item, uh, this uh, button, which is uh, the surface scans. And of course, we're talking about of surface scans and not surface scan because we, as I said, added the facility to add multiple scans. So uh, in order to activate that function, we need simply and purely to hit that uh, you know, key. And by hitting that key, the software puts us into this domain. And this domain is pretty straightforward. We do have uh, the 3D rendering uh, of the patient. Then we do have a Panorex of the patient. And also we do have uh, the sagittal view of uh, uh, the uh, Panorex. So what we need to do next as is uh, shown by the slide, we need to import surface scan. And that, in, in a sense, is pretty similar to what we uh, used to, to do, what we need to do by clicking uh, that key. We need to identify the numbers of uh, uh, STL files which we want to, to add. In this case, for example, let's assume that we want to add uh, the upper Joe STL file. So what we do, then we click on uh, that key and we do import the upper Joe. And this is a very similar to what has been doing uh, uh, lately with the uh, surface scan importation. So the same way applies here, what we do, and the only change is that we left click and we don't right click in this case, we left click and we find the minimum three points which are well represented on both images, on the 3D rendering and on the STL file. And again, if uh, we by any chance we make a mistake, again with left click, we can erase the dot and we can redraw a dot on a different place. But the logic here is pretty straightforward. We basically identify minimum of three points, which of course can be more if we want to keep clicking on the patient anatomy, but we need to identify a, a minimum of three points in order to obtain what we can see in this image, which is a, the matching of the STL file on the DICOM Data set. And as you can see on the left, on the right quadrant, the bottom right quadrant, we can uh, scan the matching uh, that has been carried out by our three points and by the software, and eventually amend it, add in uh, other points if it's necessary, or simply and purely going on by importing further STL files. And this is at the button and the key that allows to do that. 
And by doing that, we do have a chance to get into a different uh, uh, domain. And this is uh, the ambience where we are actually landing uh, uh, by clicking, uh, uh, you know, adding uh, uh, the, the byte scan, which allows us to add, as we can see in this case, the lower STL file and also the byte occlusion of the upper and the lower. So once we got the three STL file uh, showing off on, uh, on this ambient, what we need to do, and already we know uh, by experience, we need to identify three points which are uh, you know, uh, mutually present on the upper jaw STL and the byte, occlusion byte STL. And by doing that, we, in this case, it's very simple because we can uh, identify the cusps of, of these teeth. So once we matched the upper and the byte, you will see uh, on the uh, right quadrant, the uh, bottom right quadrant, that we actually succeed in merging the STL file of the, the upper jaw STL file with the byte STL. We can see the green predominating in this matching. So what we need, we are left to, we are left to do the same with the lower jaw STL file. Equally, in this case, what we need to do is to pinpoint three points. In this case, as you can see, we cannot identify the cusps because of the occlusion. So in this case, we will find the, the margin, the gingival marginal point that we can uh, you know, pinpoint on both STL file. Once we, we carry it out with this, we will uh, succeed in getting a uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, the quality of the matching, which is uh, shown by the predom predominant green color out of the red color of uh, the uh, you know uh, that we can see on the on the right uh, lower right quadrant, showing that uh, the uh, you know the matching has been carried out properly. If not, we could have uh, added. Uh, other points in order to still get to the same end result, which is appropriate uh, matching of the STL file. So once, once we've done that, what we need to do is then, uh, you know, click on save. And by clicking on save, we get back to our, you know, standard uh, uh, quadrants, where in this case, we can uh, succeedly see uh, not only the 3D rendering, uh, of, uh, of the patient, but uh, we can also see the uh, upper and lower STL file. So the other feature, which is uh, very helpful indeed, if we can then click on the icon of the STL file that we can find on each quadrant, lower quadrants, it's we can start coloring the surface of the STL files, in this case, it's called uh, surface number one. And we can edit the color of this surface. And by clicking, of course, edit color, we can uh, choose whatever color we think it's more appropriate in order to differentiate upper and lower STL file. Not only that, but we do have a chance, of course, uh, to uh, color as well the lower jaw. And in fact, uh, we do have a chance uh, also to toggle the visibility of the upper and the lower jaw. As you see on this option, there's a toggle visibility for all. It means that uh, we can, uh, you know, turn on or turn off uh, the STL file altogether, or we can toggle the visibility of a surface number one, or we can toggle visibility of surface number two. So, and, uh, and that's basically uh, a key advantage of the system, which allows us, you know, to really play 
on uh, uh, the different STL files that we can see on these pictures being of two different colors. So, and if we need at the end of this exercise to remove the STL file because of uh, whatever reason, again, uh, we do have uh, a, a pop-up menu that we can click on and it's triggered by clicking on this small triangle that we can find on the flank of the surface scan, scan, scan key by activating uh, this pop-up menu, we can uh, again remove all STL file that we've been imported. So this is a, uh, basically is the end of, of this feature, which is uh, again, uh, uh, I recap in a uh, in, uh, in few seconds, allows us to import multiple STL files, toggle them and, uh, and get, you know, in this uh, valid help in, in planning a prosthetic driven, uh, uh, you know, uh, surgery. So that is, uh, is uh, as I said, is uh, the, the end of the first feature. We do have a second feature, which is uh, equally interesting, which, which is, uh, we said, uh, is the STL trace registration. The STL trace registration, as I said, we do already, uh, we are very familiar uh, since uh, almost one, one year now that uh, with the idea of uh, tracing. In other words, we are familiar with the idea that uh, instead of uh, having a, a patient with a CT marker on the time of the CBCT, we do have a chance to work on a standard CBCT and then register patient anatomy after the CBCT. Uh, it's quite, uh, quite compelling as a, as a proposition because it allows us, first of all, uh, to reduce the number of uh, CBCTs on the patient or even more, eventually to use the patient CBCTs, which has already been taken uh, from a third party radiologic center and start working on that CBCT with Navident, with dynamic navigation. And we could achieve that by the means of tracing, by introducing a, what we call a tracer, which is a nothing more than a contact scanner, con contact scan tracer, which allows us to contour the surface of minimum three teeth and therefore generating a, a mesh, a 3D mesh, which the software matches with the 3D rendering of the patient. That logic, uh, which is a quite, uh, uh, quite compelling, uh, a quite uh, effective, uh, might encounter some difficulties if we do have patients with artifacts because of uh, their uh, the prosthesis. There's a metallic in the prosthesis, uh, and the metallic create and generates some artifacts. And we can see here a picture which shows a case where we can see both on the right side, but also on the left side, there is artifact. And, uh, and by the way, the, the, of course, the missing teeth are the central teeth. So in this case, you know, performing a standard tracing, uh, uh, which means contouring uh, three available teeth and then allowing the software to do the matching uh, of uh, the 3D mesh with the 3D rendering can be a challenge. So in that case, uh, the situation, it's possi the possibility we have introduced is to uh, do a tracing using the STL matching. And again, this is a very familiar picture for those who know, for those who know and use uh, Navident, but uh, Again, we do have a 3D rendering uh, on the left, top left quadrant. Then we do have uh, two D views, which is uh, the panorex, the actual view, the sagittal, and the coronal view. And then you can see by looking at uh, the, uh, you know, the um, sagittal view, you can see the artifacts here, and how it affects negatively affects, uh, you know, the opportunity 
to draw uh, you know a valid information for that single crown so how we can tackle that issue we can tackle the issue and again this is a again equally quite uh, uh, you know compelling uh, picture of uh, uh, what we're talking about in terms of artifacts and scatters and how it hinder it hinders the possibility to draw a significant amount of data from the single crown. So what we do, we do first, first of all, we use a tracer. So this is a, a tracer, which is nothing more than a, a, a contact scanner, which is, has a, a probe. You see, there's a tool with a probe, a round shaped probe, which we can use to contour surfaces. And uh, as we said, we, uh, we, can, we can contour crown surfaces and, uh, and, and, get, the, and get the matching and get the, the uh, registration. But uh, in order to do that, we need also to have uh, what we call a caliber. And this is uh, something that uh, we introduced uh, as well. Uh, so uh, some of us are quite familiar with it by now. But uh, what we're talking about, we're talking about a metallic tool, which is a, a very helpful to communicate with the software, which kind of tool we are using uh, uh, on the specific uh, time. And you can see there's a certain amount of numbers. You can see now here number two, number three, and number four. Those, number, those numbers hint to the type of tool that we're going to be using. For example, when we do have uh, drills, when we do have uh, uh, tips, when we do have uh, tracer tools tip, we're going to be using uh, this number two, which has a, a dimple, where we're going to lay down uh, our tip in order to communicate with the software and let him know the type of tool we are currently using. While uh, number three, it's used uh, for calibration of a piezo handpiece. And number four, it's used for calibrating the axis of uh, a turbine, not a contrangle, but high speed turbine. So, and this is uh, again uh, the other view of this caliber, the metallic caliber, and it's metallic uh, because we're going to autoclave it. And so it's autoclavable and can stay sterile. On the major table, and you see, besides uh, number two, number three, and four, we do have also other numbers: one L and one R, which are used if you are left-handed or right-handed to calibrate the axis of a contrangle. So you put the chuck of your contrangle into the peg, and then you make a, a twist uh, of a quarter of a circle in order to allow the software know, allow the software um, to know that uh, you're using a specific contrangle. As you know, the philosophy of uh, Navident is use a, a, you know, a universal adapter, which allows you to place and uh, to uh, allows you to use the, the dynamic navigation concept uh, over a broad uh, gamut of, of tool. Not only contrangles, but uh, we said, uh, uh, turbine, we said the piezo handpiece, we said uh, straight handpiece. So in order to provide the exact information of what, which type of uh, tool you are currently using, then the caliber, the metallic caliber, becomes an essential tool of communication to the software. So, but we we opened uh, you know a bracket here. We we want to go back to tracing, and we know that, and we said. That uh, if we are going to trace, in other words, we, if you're going to use a tracer, a tracer in order to contour, uh, you know, uh, an, an item, you need to first place the probe, the tracer probe, into the dimple, allowing the software, allowing the, the Navident to understand that you're gonna be now, you're gonna be from now onward, you're gonna be tracing. That is the option that opens up to you. So, and this is exactly what we're talking about. You know, you see the surgeon here, in this case, we, we're talking about Dr. Luigi 
Vito Stefanelli, who is a, a master clinical trainer of Navident and is the current president of the Dynamic Navigation Society, which under the ages of which we're currently presenting uh, this video. And uh, I thank uh, personally uh, Dr. Luigi Vito Stefanelli for having uh, given me the pictures I'm uh, presenting you. But as you can see, him is, is now doing a, what we call a calibration of the tracer tip. And, uh, and he does it by using the caliber. Once he has done that calibration, that is, this is a, the interface, which is a, a basically you work with, and the interface shows the STL of the upper jaw. And of course, the STL in this case has been uh, built on uh, is a digital walks up, which has been uh, uh, put on a, on, a, on a virtual articulator, has been uh, designed by a lab and uh, given uh, to Dr. Stefanelli via uh, you know, email uh, or via uh, WeTransfer as a digital file. So what it does, it does import the STL file and, the, and in, uh, once he uh, calibrated the, the, the tracer, the tracer uh, he, he starts, you know, identifying points, and we know there's a limited amount of uh, three points, uh, and uh, you can add as many points as you want, but you, you need to have a minimum of three points in order to get uh, uh, an object, an item matched. So now, now he has identified the points. Now he starts using, uh, using uh, uh, the uh, tracer, having a, a pinpointed the, the trigger point, now he has the opportunity to draw a window of 100 points by contouring, in this case, uh, the surface of, of, the, um, of the, uh, the, the STL file. And he does it uh, not only on one quadrant, he does it on the opposite quadrant, and he does it on uh, as many points that uh, he was uh, uh, he was to uh, uh, to draw and basically as once he reached 100 then he basically um, has uh, the uh, for all points wow. he has uh, wow. he has the opportunity uh, to finish the activity okay. and that's, that is the that is the uh, is the uh, basically uh, the end result he want he wants to do each time he wants to perform accuracy check. You see, there's a, an accuracy check view open here where he puts the probe of the tracer and he touches any point uh, and he proves that there's a congruency between what he does, what he touches, and what he sees, what he sees on, uh, on, the, uh, on the laptop screen. And you can see uh, there's basically no difference whatsoever between uh, the probe and the, the, the target surface, which shows is a point, 0, 0.0 millimeter of difference. And that proves the, the accuracy of, uh, uh, of the, the whole exercise. And he can, does, he can repeat uh, this exercise also on uh, uh, basically on uh, uh, other, uh, other points as well. So by, by having, Having said that, that's that's in a sense ends uh, you know the STL matching as an opportunity, and uh, um, allows me uh, to present. And I restate uh, for those who actually had uh, uh, the necessity to uh, join us only now, the opportunity to write up their questions on uh, 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 the chat. So you do have a chat on your control panel. And if you open the, that chat, you, you will see that there is a chance for you to write up uh, any questions and I will address each, of, in, each of, of them by the end of the presentation. So am I asking you to mute yourself? I mute yourself. I will presenting you the features. You will uh, write up the questions and I will uh, eventually address the, all of them by the end of my presentation. So I will uh, dwell now on some uh, aspect which I feel are equally uh, useful in terms of uh, uh, novelties that has been introduced with uh, version 2.2. And I'm referring uh, to the implant planning. So implant planning, and again, 
for those of you who are new to Navident, it's pretty straightforward because we do have a chance, again, by looking at the control panel to add an implant. As you can see, not only you can add a virtual crown, and we've seen before how to add uh, an STL file, but you can add, of course, an implant. One of the novelty uh, which has been introduced by version 2.2 is that we added uh, a, a property, a pop-up menu, uh, by right-clicking on the implant. So now, by right-clicking uh, on the implant that has been uh, uh, planned, you can have uh, a set of options available. So let's so we will dwell on those options and we'll investigate on each individual uh, uh, option available. So first of all, uh, we will see that uh, one option that you're going to have by looking at this pop-up menu, it's to lock the implant plan. So that, in a sense, might facilitate and you see there's a lock uh, showing off which says that uh, now you cannot you know uh, move you're pretty happy about that position you want to lock it uh, you don't want to risk that by accident that position changes then what you can do by right clicking and uh, getting uh, the pop-up menu you can lock that position in place that's one feature then you do have a very important uh, uh, feature, which is uh, the properties. You want to uh, specify properties for this implant. And what does it mean? For example, you want to name that implant non, not after the number, which are generated uh, by the software, which are starting from one to whatever. You want to name according to the FDI uh, nomenclature of, of this uh, specific implant. And for in this case, you want to add number 45. And, and therefore, you can see that now, from now onward, the implant is labeled number 45. Then you do have uh, the opportunity to change either on uh, the property panel length and diameter. And you can see, you can change also the color of that implant. So all, you know, by tricking on, uh, on the properties. What you can do, <clears throat> you can copy that implant. And by copying that implant, you generate another implant. That's a copy of uh, uh, the second uh, generated uh, copied implant. And you can set that copied implant parallel, and again, by clicking on set parallel to, in this case, number 45. As you can see, you can generate, uh, you know, uh, some uh, angulation which are, you know, consistent uh, within your planning. Then you can group or ungroup implants together, you see? You can, uh, 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 by clicking a, a group and group, you can identify the available implants. In this case, you got two implants, number 45 and number 46. You can then move uh, to grouped implants and you can move from left to right. And now, and you can change eventually the color of these implants. And from now onward, you can move these two implants together. So now they are grouped together and they move together. And of course, you can uh, uh, do uh, the opposite. You can ungroup the implants and you can start you know, working individually, uh, uh, putting uh, again uh, the grouped implant and moving uh, uh, the, the implant that you want to ungroup on the, on the left side of, uh, of this uh, pop-up menu. And, uh, and therefore, you get uh, you know you get everything uh, uh, because of uh, of the situation of of, uh, of the implants. So that ends up uh, uh, you know the uh, features on uh, on implant planning, and uh, I feel that uh, I've been really and we're going to be very helpful for you guys using a um, you know. Um, 
uh, using a, and the uh, the ability of uh, of doing and uh, I want to introduce you with another option, which is uh, available, which is uh, the opportunity now to have high degrees of implant angulation. So this is a, a feature which is, a, uh, you know, we, we do uh, know that uh, implants are usually planned vertically, or they do have uh, an angle that uh, usually it's uh, below 45 degrees. But uh, as we said, we opened up a Navident to another host of uh, potential users, uh, which uh, they might be willing to use uh, the software for their endeavors, such as, uh, for example, uh, endodontists who might be interested in apicoectomies and might be interested in angulating the, the planning of these apicoectomies under angulations which are not the standard angulations of, uh, of an implant. So another feature which has been brought on uh, uh, version 2.2, as you can see from these three snapshots, is that you can plan uh, the implant, in this case, or you can plan your drilling sec sequence uh, by angulating uh, uh, this axis uh, more than 45 degrees and that's that's equally as i said uh, an interesting uh, features that uh, is, uh, is is available there is a, another feature which is uh, uh, basically uh, uh, equally interesting uh, it's related uh, to uh, to evalunav and evalunav as, uh, as I said uh, at the beginning, uh, but I repeat it here for those who joined us now, will, uh, is, a, is a software application, which is uh, uh, in the uh, Navident uh, ecosystem. It's part of uh, the Navident ecosystem, but it's a software per se, and allows the software to do import a, a post-operative CBCT and uh, a planned CBCT. So you do have a chance within this environment to import the two data sets, the pre-op and the post-op CBCT. And what Evalunav enables you to do is to really match the post-op with the pre-op and quantify exactly the difference between the implant placement and implant planning. This operation has been simplified and has been rendered in a very, a very intuitive operation. And here I'm presenting you exactly with uh, one uh, picture. And the picture, uh, again, uh, I thank Dr. Luigi Vito Stefanelli for having uh, uh, landed this picture to me. I borrowed the picture from him and uh, the picture shows exactly what uh, uh, Evalunav, the endpoint of Evalunav is. As you can see, you see a 3D rendering uh, of a jaw, and you see two pictures, yellow and red pictures. The, yell the yellow pictures, the yellow implant shape pictures are the planned implants. And you can see that uh, from the head of the yellow shape starts in a, 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 an axis, which is a, the implant axis, which has been had according to the plan. Then you can see matched uh, on top of uh, that yellow shape, another shape, which is a red, which has a equally an axis. Then the red axis is basically uh, the placed implant. So what uh, has been really uh, delivered to the patient. So the end point, you can really appreciate it on, uh, on this quadrant here on the top left, because it quantifies the gap between the plan and the placed. And you see here, entry into the 0.49 millimeters, apex 3D 0.40 millimeters, Apex in volume 40 millimeters, angle deviation 
4.12 degrees. So what's the purpose of this exercise? Multifaceted, because of how you do have uh, uh, the option on one side, if it's possible to take a second CBCT from your own patient, you do have a chance really to understand the delivery of the placement. And really, it's a, it's a tool which allows you to improve your learning curve, to understand the difference between what you've done uh, compared to what you planned. So it's, it's a great learning experience. Of course, if only if a second CBCT can be taken on that specific patient. But there's another set of options available, which is, a, of course, related to research, to literature. Most of the literature which has been produced uh, lately uh, has used, as you, as you know, uh, Mimix uh, as a software. But this is, a, and you know, Mimix is a, a software which is going to consider the a gold standard uh, in, uh, in the literature. And this software, which is a, a value nav, does exactly the same, but it's a free. It's completely included uh, into the ecosystem uh, of Navident. So basically, it allows you to quantify uh, on a certain amount of cases, uh, having uh, received the ethical approval for the piece of research that you are developing, the opportunity to really quantify the accuracy uh, not only for a single case, but uh, for a certain amount of cases, uh, allowing you to investigate the level of accuracy of this technique. And thanks to the piece of literature which has been published lately by a host of uh, Navident users, um, we definitely have uh, uh, the evidence of uh, a high level of accuracy related uh, to the dynamic navigation approach, which is a, a equally quite uh, reassuring uh, and quite uh, compelling uh, in, uh, in in this in this case. So this is uh, basically um, the end of uh, uh, of my first five items. As I said at the beginning, uh, there are other two important items which are left. Uh, which I will dwell on a second, uh, uh, you know, go to meeting uh, conference, which are number six and number seven. Number six is to add uh, so cutting planes, and we will see uh, how we can achieve that, and we will see also the important uh, clinical applications available now by introducing a, a cutting plane. And then uh, we will dwell as well on number seven, item number seven, which is uh, introducing, a, I would say, revolutionary and amazing, uh, uh, in terms of uh, simplicity, protocols for treating uh, total edentulous patients, as opposed of using a, a mini implant, which has been, uh, you know, the standard uh, uh, for total edentulous patient uh, up to now. We will usher in an opportunity, which is a dramatic uh, in terms of a simplification, of using uh, uh, mini screws or using uh, what we call a navy bite with screws to allow the registration of a total agentulous patient. Again, again, those two items will be uh, object. Uh, of a specific, you know, uh, conference uh, call in, in the future. But now, I, by looking at uh, my watch, I see that uh, we've been talking about uh, um, uh, your questions, and uh, uh, and I can read uh, Dr. Bouget's question uh, uh, loud on behalf of uh, everybody else. But uh, so my question is whether it will be possible to import an STL file generated by scanning implant scan bodies after the scan has been processed by the lab and the virtual implant analogous added into a value nav using surface scan meshing. 
but also seeing if you can assess position of placed implants without having to take a second CBCT scan. So that's, that's a very important uh, question because, of course, we know that uh, uh, taking a second CBCT is not always possible, has to be, you know, uh, it's very much specific uh, uh, to the case or has to be approved by an ethical committee. So therefore, having a, an opportunity to match uh, improve accuracy, not by matching a SBC, a CBCT data sets, but to match a STL file, that would be basically very helpful because it could prove accuracy in a, in a completely different domain, which is a domain which doesn't, uh, uh, you know, project any irradiation to the patient. So that would, would be a very important endeavor whatsoever. And then, well, yes, that is the purpose of the whole thing. Of course, as, uh, as we can uh, uh, see from uh, Dr. Bouget's question, uh, this is uh, a very compelling uh, uh, statement. Uh, and uh, we are, of course, in the position uh, to introduce uh, with Navident an option which wasn't existing before, which is uh, adding uh, multiple STL files, being capable to match those STL files together by using uh, some references, which allows us to match multiple STL files, because of what we've done uh, and we've seen, we've seen that, uh, that by the explanation I gave, we've seen uh, the opportunity to match the byte uh, with uh, uh, the arch, but nothing forbids to eventually match some markers available on uh, the STL files together. Uh, while, for example, we do not have teeth, or while uh, we do want to add uh, layer complexities uh, one uh, on top of the other. So uh, that is the, really uh, the purpose and the intention of uh, this feature. And of course, we need to document and demonstrate the feasibility of that. And I know that Dr. Bouges, Dr. Stefanelli, and other colleagues are working towards that direction. I know also uh, that uh, Pro uh, Professor uh, Falcon Harrison uh, is working on uh, applying that feature on smile design because that is equally a quite uh, compelling uh, proposition. Uh, and the compelling proposition is to uh, get uh, the importation of uh, uh, the uh, plan of uh, of the of the of the smile and uh, the opportunity to get that information uh, compounded into into navident so that's that's equally another application and of course right now there is no evidence there's no uh, uh, you know uh, conclusive uh, evidence from a clinical standpoint that uh, that can be achieved but of course that doesn't mean that uh, cannot be achieved, and that it doesn't mean that uh, the uh, avenue for exploration and for research is open and ripe to get to that level of understanding. So uh, I um, I do have another question here. Will Evalunav be available to check accuracy of piezo scission corticotomies? And again. Of course, yes, the question is, uh, uh, we do have uh, uh, the, the chance uh, to do uh, matching. In this case, we do have corticotomies, uh, and therefore we do have a plan, corticotomies. And do we do have uh, another area, which is a, a black area, which is uh, the result, the end result of a corticotomy. So basically, are we able to match uh, the plan with uh, an area of the CBCT, in this case is a uh, black, it, it, radio translucent, because we took the bone out of the jaw. What is uh, the question is, uh, yes, I mean, uh, that opportunity is there. Nobody has uh, uh, conclusively demonstrated that. That opens up, as in another opportunity of investigation, which we, I think, it's worth exploring. Because of, again, this is a, 
uh, the corticotomy uh, you, you done carried out by using a piezo is, a, is another quite important achievement for the patient. And if we can uh, not only do that, because we already know for sure that uh, we can achieve it uh, using Navident, because Navident enables piezo activity, but if you can also do it from uh, an assessment standpoint, that would be equally important because it will enable us uh, to get uh, uh, to a level that we can improve the uh, the surgeries up to a level which is uh, most satisfactory for the patient, which we know is ultimately the beneficiary of uh, uh, of the surgery and uh, and our endeavors. So that is uh, uh, the question, and uh, uh, I do have uh, uh, another question by Dr. Bara. He asked, uh, um, do you think that in the actual uh, situation uh, to work with Navident can be decreases the risk for infection or transmission of a COVID, less surgery, indirect vision? Thanks, uh, Dr. Bara, for this, because it's, uh, I think it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a very, it's a fait accompli, because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a fait accompli in the sense that uh, dynamic navigation uh, is going to command great attention by the surgeons based on the COVID situation because of uh, the uh, intrinsic uh, philosophy of dynamic navigation. The intrinsic philosophy is uh, the one day dentistry, the fact that uh, you can do more on the patient. And we know that uh, now the, the chances to dilute treatment on different sessions will be challenged and, the, and surgeons Will be forced to do more on the patient with less visits and of course the idea of navident it's there because you do have a chance to do the cbct to plan and to the surgery but also the activity of uh, the surgery per se it's very uh, you know safe from uh, uh, you know an infection or a risk of infection standpoint because uh, you do work uh, by looking at a laptop screen and don't immersing yourself on the patient's mouth. So it's equally, and you are 12 hours compared to the, to the patient. So equally quite helpful position in order to stave off any risk of infection. And equally, as we can, uh, as you've seen, that we introduced a caliber, which is a, a very essential tool uh, to communicate uh, with uh, with uh, with the software, which is a metallic, and that metallic allows to be uh, autoclaved, and therefore allows it to get it sterilized and use it uh, uh, as a sterilized tool to calibrate the drills, to calibrate pips, to calibrate implants, and therefore guaranteeing uh, the level of uh, asepsis and uh, and uh, sterilization which is required by the nature of a surgical treatment. So thanks, Dr. Barra, for, for this question, because I, it's more a question, it's a more an observation. Thanks, thanks a lot. So I don't see any further question, and a look at my watch, we spent uh, one hour, one hour of flyover for me, and I hope hopefully also for you, because I'm uh, very excited uh, about these new features, uh, and I'm looking forward uh, to a second uh, conference call, which uh, will uh, help to share with you guys how a cutting plane and how two successful and compelling protocols have been introduced to, to treat total edentulous patient. So having said that, I'm, uh, I'm just, uh, um, thank you for you guys being here live uh, on this session. And I also thank those who will be listening to this session uh, re registered home. And I wish you all the best, and of course, all uh, uh, the big fan of, uh, of using a dynamic navigation and using Navident. All the best, and enjoy the rest of your day. Goodbye.